Hello, everybody. This is your inspirational nurse, underscore IN. Tierra comes to you live with another great video. Now, I know it's been a minute, so please forgive me. I've been going through some things, y'all. So today's video is super special. It's all about ICU, all about your critical care units, the expectations, my role, and things that you might have been thinking about, or maybe you want to take a leap into critical care. Maybe you used to do it and you want to return back to that world. I am going to give you the T and the MICU, CVT ICU, step down, and all of that and more. So please continue to watch if you're super interested in the ICU or critical care. Please watch. This is going to be super, super, super good because listen, anything that I tell y'all, y'all know I'm going to give y'all the full T. So let's just jump into it. So guys, now back then when I first started as a new grad, I had the opportunity to work in the largest step down ICU unit for a hospital. After I completed my residency program, I felt like I was prepared a little bit somewhat because I knew the hospital system very well, how to chart documentation, all the goodies, right? So when I get into the step down ICU world, guys, First off, you want to be careful. Like, y'all know, my tip number one is to watch these hospitals and organizations. Sometimes they would label a unit as a critical care unit, like step down or something like that, and it won't be a true step down ICU unit. I have seen this several times, and it's so annoying because when you get there, guys, there's tele patients, there's regular general sur surgical patients, or maybe these patients just a little bit sick and they might just need BiPAP or CPAP, but it's not your intent true step down ICU unit. You will know the difference if you ever worked in a really true ICU or step down ICU unit. You know that when you go somewhere, you will know the difference when there's a hospital that just created a unit and call it what it is, but it's not actually running as such. Now I have ran into this several times and usually hospitals organizations would do that because they want their high skilled nurses to be to come into their hospital and work with their general patients. Maybe they have more general patients than they have critical, and then they advertise it and market it as such, but it's really not a true ICU or step-down unit. And this could be disappointing for those who is really looking for that, to have that compassion with critical patients. Now, guys, for me, guys, I have personally never thought I would be in critical care or like anything with critical care um, because I started off in med surge. But I transitioned pretty good into it. It very, it was more intense in the step down ICU I was in when I first started as an RN was really a true step down ICU unit. Um, we had the same expectations to the ICU. The only difference is, is you are a, a high level of care from med surge, and you're and then they downgrade ICU patients to you. So you'll get downgraded ICU patients. And maybe patients as in the general population that are very sick need high level of care. They usually try to put them in a step down before they give an ICU bed up. So it could be very hard for those who are in management in the hospital and you're trying to decide where these patients are going or how to move the patients around. So you always have an ICU bed available, a true ICU bed available for a really critical patient. So I hope that I know that sounds like a lot, but I really want to get on here and, and just go and let y'all know how my experience has been going. Um, I always I didn't know I always was a critical care type of nurse. I really didn't know who I was. Or have any of y'all been in nursing school and y'all like, I don't even know what I want to be because there's so much opportunities, right? There's so many different units, so many different different unique hospitals and organizations. And you're like, I don't even know what I want to do. I always was that girl. And I especially was that girl that changed her major like five times in, 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 in college. So don't judge. But I definitely was just exploring myself and things that I might be interested in later on if I'm not totally in nursing, right? There's nothing wrong with that. You're just trying to find yourself in the healthcare, which healthcare is a huge system. So guys, I, when I learned that I was a critical care nurse is when I started to get placed in critical situations, when I had to react to a acute change in a patient. That's when I realized that my passion and love for critical care, I realized that I really do work really well under pressure. Now, I didn't know that right away until I got placed in, like for instance, guys, my first week at the hospital, I caught a DIC, a patient that was bleeding internally, guys, internally, meaning you couldn't see that this was a critical issue, but it definitely was a big acute change. She was a post-surgical cancer patient. Um, getting ready to go home, literally transportation was there or her lines were out, her husband was walking around her new unit. She's young, she has young kids. And I just looked at her and it was just something off about her. I, don't, I couldn't tell you, it was no physical thing that I saw, but I just had that 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 talent of, 
something's not right. And I remember telling the surgeon and Paige and the um, nurse practitioner and anybody I could get my hands on. Now, this was a very busy hospital. So it wasn't a lot of help. People would try, but they don't have, they're so busy with eight and nine patients of their own that people just didn't have the time, right? And the sur I remember being so disappointed because the surgeon didn't want me to do like an H&H &H or like do a scan or anything. He just told me to watch her. And when I went back in the room, y'all, she was completely like sitting in the corner in the room struggling. Like she went from zero to 10, y'all, real quick. And I remember being so scared, like new. And I'm just like, for, but some reason, everything that I was thinking to do, I've done it. Like I put an IV under pressure with her husband by the bedside, trying to put oxygen back on her because he was an EMT and all this extraness. I remember she wanted to go to the restroom. I tried to get to the restroom. She And then I got her back to the bed, like different places. And all of a sudden the blood was like her belly was filling up like she was pregnant. The blood was seeping out. She was throwing it up. I mean, it was coming from everywhere. And I remember it was like my brain. I was just in this constant tunnel vision of I got to do something about it. Like I just went into a natural, like I don't even know how to explain it, guys. I, I don't. I was even surprised at myself that I was like able to handle a DI. She was a true, I mean, she bled from everywhere at some point and then went to alter mental status. And I remember stepping out the room to look for help still getting labs right and i remember just calling down for a scam and they wouldn't take the patient because they said the patient was going to die on the way there they were scared to take the patient and when i stepped out the room everybody was crying oh my god she's gonna pass oh my god oh my god oh my god and i kept saying if you would have ordered what i told you to order in the first place so when you're coming into a big uh, hospital organization when you start to put your print down on the ground and they know okay this girl something different about this nurse she just I'm telling you, I, I, the whole hospital had a, a different attitude towards me. The doctors started to, you know, like they trusted me with their patients. Like they started to know like, oh, she got a certain talent. The difference is when you're a critical care nurse and you are new still as a nurse, you're still developing. You're still getting your confidence. But what happens is not everybody want to see you win. Not everybody want to see you happy. Not everybody celebrates that. Seeing my patient not die was a celebration for me because I did what I could to sustain her. Now, by the time they got up there to do anything, the doctor asked me what to do. I'm like, uh, you need the surgery because she obviously is type of complications. And he was like, he was just panicking. He was like, oh, uh, consent. No, you don't need consent in an emergency situation. It's just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just like, okay. Uh, yeah, so what I learned from that is that like most hospitals that are like really, really big, when you're starting to show like that, a lot of, it draws sometimes good, good intention, attention from people and bad. Um, some people really took on to me, like a, a lot of doctors, they, they were so nice. They, they started to like really trust in me, whatever I tell them to order, they will order. Um, if I tell them something, cause usually by the time my providers thought to order something or think there was a change in something, I already told them to order it. So they loved that to the point where they asked me to work for them privately, a nurse practitioner position. I turned everything down and I explained why I did all that. Cause God told me to step down at the time. I was not being nurtured. So when anytime a nurse has a certain gift, like all of us as healthcare workers and nurses, we have a certain gift to 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 do something or deal with a certain type of patient or pick up on certain things. And it's good to be somewhere where that gift is being nurtured and 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 and, and, and confidence is going and you're being like, you know, pat on the back, good job. You know, little things like that helps a nurse to develop and to have the confidence in that area to take care of a critical care patient because a critical care patient could be very scary because they go from zero to 10 and, and you have to be able to work under pressure. I remember even putting a Foley in under like during the cold, like, and I was so proud of myself because I got that Foley in quick and I was doing things so fast. It was the only thing I forgot to do because I still knew y'all. I was like, I forgot to take my syringe off and my balloon deflated. <laughs> I had to start over, but that's okay. But I even had picked up on a lot of patients that were having like critical issues. I remember having telling a doctor about one that had a blood clot in her leg. And she was like, I was just about to order that. Oh my God, that's crazy. And I was like, don't order that mad because it's going to cross the placenta. Like just different things that God would give me, the Holy Spirit would give me to, um, to deal in certain critical care situations. Now this one, this got me on a newsletter a couple of times in my hospital, got a lot of awards. A lot of patients wanted me to the point where people were just asking for me. Now I didn't even know until I started going to different floors and they was like, Oh yeah, so-and-so 
brought her grandmother in or her aunt in for you to take care of. And like, and then one manager stepped in my face about it and was like, well, why everybody wants you don't want my team? And that's when I started to realize because I didn't even know it was such a thing. I wasn't even, I didn't even know I was anything. I just thought I was just a new nurse learning, you know, and people were like paying attention. Like the patients were like paying attention to that ability of me being able to pick up critical things or when it's a big change or quick change or like really, really serious situation that occur. That's what tell you if critical care is for you. You get put in a critical situation. Did you perform? Now, it's okay if you're the type of nurse that belong in an emergency room. Now, that is a whole different beast. Now, I learned that I am not that girl. <laughs> Y'all, I know in my heart I'm critical care because I wanted to solely bad do my assessment, solely bad be around my patient because that's how I pick up on these things. And I'm like, ooh, something's not right with that one. But in the ER, they already taking your patient to upstairs to bed. They be already half dead. They already going. I'm like, oh, Lord. And I'm just praying for these people so much. I didn't even want to, I didn't even sit down when I was working night shift in the ER because I was just so like nervous from my patients i'm like oh my god i'm watching the monitors and watching everything but everybody has a gift and it's all about tapping into your gift and asking god to use you as a vessel the thing is the demons in the healthcare they don't like it they don't like when you are you know you're helping sustain in life because maybe they want that person i mean i'm not trying to go too deep but you know it's it's, it's, it's a thing there like and and when you somewhere where you can be nurtured and you can grow and and your gift it's, it's amazing what you can do in, in, in critical care. It's always in critical care, you're under pressure. So if you can deal with the amount of pressure and anxiety of your patients always coding, because that's the life of an ICU nurse, whether you work step down, where you work ICU, regular ICU, your patients usually code. Like re last, last shift I just worked, guys, my patient okay, literally came up and I was like, okay, this patient's getting intubated, this patient. And it's so funny because naturally i'm just going into the things of getting the patient prepared for intubation and it's like i just did what i had to do to help you know get the patient prepared and everything like i was doing everything and i was just like wow like my brain just works when it's serious now guys when i'm on a regular floor i could get the wrong the smallest thing wrong that's just and that's just being human that's just me being honest on here when i'm in a general population floor i'm just like Ugh. It's not feeding. It's not feeding things in me that uh, to make that that critical care nurse in me. It's not feeding me on a regular general floor because in the regular general floor, I have to give my patient up to a high level care nurse. And I'm like, oh, I want to follow the case. And in the ICU, the beauty of being in the ICU, guys, is that you learn how to really code your patient. It's a control code rather than when you're on the regular floor and you're you calling a code, a rapid response or a code. And you're waiting for the team to show up. And then they're like doing whatever to your patient. And then you're like, wait, but what about this? And they that pain, you know mine. <laughs> and I was like, oh, one day I'm going to be in critical care. I'm going to be the one running the codes. <laughs> that was me, y'all. That was me. But, you know, in the ICU, the codes are usually happening a lot. So it helps you to build your confidence when, it's, when your patient is not, it's like blood pressure's all over the place, heart rate's all over the place. That's why now, guys, when I work a regular floor, just to help, because right now I'm flex, I'm a float pool nurse and I float around at all the critical cares and sometimes I might do general floor. I see a blood pressure and if it's a little, little down there, I'm like, oh, that ain't nothing because I'm used to critical care. So, But on a regular floor, the, pay, the nurses be freaking out like, oh my God, this is the heart rate is like, let's say the heart rate is like one-on-one. -on -one. You're like, Okay, I mean, <laughs> I mean, when you're a critical care nurse, you usually see critical numbers. You usually have an EF that's five percent, two percent. You know, like to a general floor nurse, they're like, oh, running all around the place, RT and their patients fifty times, not really doing a thorough assessment, not really seeing what PRM meds that they can use and things that the doctor already put in place. So I have a struggle when I be going to the general floor, guys, and that be them nurses be laughing at me because I be just, just like, uh, okay, I guess I'm they to them I'm a little laid back, but then like they scared to give me report or take patients from me because they know that they have to be up to standards and up to par because the questions I'm asking them they are like, uh, like I'm like why is just like that and why is that what's going on with that they like uh looking and fumbling around so like I know that. <laughs> Like, yeah. So when so I had the pleasure of being in the MICU and the CVT ICU. And to me, the MICU is more for like people who like maybe you worked in med surge a lot and you you used to like general. It's kind of like general ICU. 
where it has a lot more beds. They need, they have a lot more needs as far as staffing goes. Um, it could be a little chaotic because you have like maybe four patients and you could go up to five at night because usually nights they struggle. They don't have no staff. It could be very dangerous because you have all these patients intubated. They're very sickly. There's a lot of beds. It's a busy unit. Um, so it was like a different experience, but I felt more comfortable. I don't know with that those types of ICU patients. Now, the CBT ICU to me is more small. It's more focused. You have post-cabbage patients, open-heart patients. It's more focused. It's more small. And then step-down ICU, I feel like if you can survive a true step-down ICU, you can survive any ICU and anywhere else. Because I feel like step-down ICU really prepares you to really be an awesome nurse because I feel like those nurses work extra hard to keep their patients from going back to the ICU. Or they're taking patients from the ICU and they're being downgraded, right? So it's like that between unit. But those nurses are those that unit usually step down ICU like a true step down ICU has usually glucomander you have a couple of drips I know the one that I'm usually on a lot now one of them are really a true true ICU step down ICU unit is an actual CVT ICU unit it matches the ICU that's like on the same unit so the ICU is on the same unit to step down and these patients are very very sick um they cold a lot you know it's very busy um, it's more controlled. You have a lot more drips. Um, so you have to be on your feet and on your toes in the step-down ICU. I feel like that's a good place to go if you're graduating out of residency program. You know you really like critical care or you may want to give it a try. I would always suggest to go to a step-down. A step-down step would definitely prepare you or allow you to say, oh, nah, this is too busy. Maybe you have neuro checks every two hours. That ah, well, you have to do your NIH scale. That's the expectations. The patient just had a stroke or there, because some step-downs are specialized into strokes or maybe specialized into heart attacks or whatever. And you have to stay up. You have to meet those standards for a stroke patient, meet those standards for a heart attack patient. And you have to do certain assessments every hour or every two hours. On top of that, you have to make sure they get their CT, MRI. You have to make sure that they're, you're watching that they can still swallow or you're still testing that ability. Or if not, they need to be MPO. Um, they can't speak if they're slurring their words. You know, if there's another, they're at risk for another stroke. Um, you need to advocate, right? So there's so much to do in a step down. It is so, it's a good place to get experience. And if you like fast paced, critical people, that is um, not intubated, but they go on high flow, BiPAP, CPAP, those ventilation settings, and you're comfortable with those vents, then the step down is definitely, definitely for you. And I tell you, it is a busy, busy, busy unit, but you learn so much. But I feel like in a step down, you have to be really fast at assessing. You can't be like too slow or taking your time or not paying attention to the heart rates and the rhythms and things that flip because these patients are changing all the time. Like their rhythms are changing. They're sickly. They're not, you know, they might be uh, headed to the ICU by the end of the shift because they need to be intubated. Um, they're not responding, you know. So your job as a step down is to keep your patients stabilized as much as possible, get them better, and then downgrade them to med surge or whatever general floor. And then they'll go to rehab and then they usually go home or they'll go to LTAC if they have a fresh trach. Like I had a trach and I haven't been trach in a while and I love my trach. So I had a new trach. I had the worst assignment. I had a new trach. I had a patient that um, brought him out to the point where she went blind. And then I had another patient that um, needed to be intubated. So it was just a lot of going on. So just make sure on these units, guys, that your assignments are being are fair. The expectation is on this unit is for you to be really good at assessing. Now, when you first come onto the unit, just remember one thing, guys. They do not know you. They don't know what you're capable of. They don't know how skilled you are. I think once they start seeing the magic, then they go, oh, I want to keep this nurse working over here. Because I notice a lot a lot of times now I'm just in the step CVT step down ICU a lot, like a lot, a lot, which is good. But... Just know that you it's kind of like when you switch units, you got to start over. The team doesn't know you. They're talking to you like ABC123. You're like, I know my ABCs. Why y'all keep asking? 
don't take offense to it. You just got to relearn the team. They have to trust you that you know what you're doing because the unit, everybody takes care of everybody's patient. Like I might walk right by a room and if I see the patient in distress, I just go in the room and do what I can for the nurse. I don't even look for the nurse and just see what I can do for the patient. Everybody's patient shares. We share patients. So there's not like a, like your, your patient is yours and only yours. So some of us get that too territorial you know, and we're like, don't touch my patient. You know, I understand. Because sometimes in critical care, some personalities can be very different. These nurses are deep thinkers. They're really good at critical care thinking. They're good at assessing. They have a lot of good abilities. But sometimes when you talk to some of them, it's just like, because they're so smart and, and good at certain things, it's just like their personality is different. Versus when you work a general floor, everybody's just so happy you're there. You know, they don't have six patients now because you're there and it's more like friendly. And But some critical care units can be very uh, clicky and uh, people are friends with other friends. And then it's like they have circles and groups of circles. And, and it's like if you don't fit in, then it's like you're isolated and you're on your own. So critical care units can be very, very, very different. So don't find somewhere that meets your needs as a nurse. If you found a unit that works for you, then go. It's always good to get your hands dirty in the unit and you can say, oh no, this, this type of ICU is not for me. There's several types of ICUs. Um, some hospitals you have to watch because if they have several types of ICUs, that means that you might be floating to general population a lot. If they have maybe one or two Three ICUs, that means that you're probably going to be just staying on that unit a lot. They're not going to float their critical care nurses to the general floor when it comes to the staffing. But I did see a lot of that in hospitals that had like eight ICUs. They float the ICU nurses all the time. Or they'll float you in the ICU you never worked. I've seen that happen a lot. So just because the hospital has like eight ICUs doesn't mean that might be something for you. Because once you're in that setting and you're in the critical thinking and you're used to sick patients, sickly patients... It's like you used to that that setting. You used to handling that pressure and that anxiety, right? Of all of coding and your patient's sick and always, you know, busy. And then all of a sudden they keep throwing you to a general floor and keep floating you, right? It just kind of throws you off when you're a critical care nurse and now you have to readjust your mind to say, I'm on a general floor. So I don't have to do this. We don't do that. What I do, guys, I always keep my same documentation as if I'm in the ICU for my general patients, even though they're general. I still keep those same routines and same behaviors. So it's not like a big change when I'm going to different units. I just keep up and chart every four, four hours, which I don't have to do, but I do anyway. And it's good because when you're rounding a lot and you're charting every four hours, you can catch a lot of things. You can catch your patient from falling. You can catch a patient if they need to go to the bathroom or something change, right? Because changes always happen in, in a setting, in a hospital. One patient might be doing all right and then one time they might not be doing all right and when you round you're like wait you look different so rounding is very important um, and it it makes the shift go faster y'all when i round like 50 times when i just worked at general floor for recently and i was just like i round all the time i did my four hours which was good because i got all my eyes and o's in you know i caught anything that needed to be caught and it just was a little a, a adjustment as far as the type of patients these patients uh, on the general floor are more needy. It's like working in a hotel. They want you to pass the remote, fill, give them more ice and more ice. And then they're like, oh, um, honey, can you um, massage me? Or can you do it? Like, it? I'm like, uh, I have heard some weird requests for me to do weird things, like literally. And I'm just like, now I see why these general floor nurses are so upset. They're so tired. They feel so used because a lot of the skills that they have, they probably feel like they're not being fulfilled. They're not fulfilling those desires and those skills and nurturing those gifts. It's so important to nurture your gift. And it's so important to believe in yourself. When you step into critical care, it could be very scary to work with patients that is that sick. And you have all these drips and all these things going, right? The number one rule in critical care is don't let your bag go dry. That is your number one rule. When you have like several things hanging, as soon as you even go down to like not even half, like n close to half, then you want to start ordering more bags, putting your new stuff up. But always check the order, especially if it's heparin or something, because most of these patients are so sick. Usually they go on a surgery or some procedure. 
and you know they might put something on hold so make sure you double check their orders but make sure you don't let your bag run dry that is the that is the number one rule in critical care because your patients need those drips to sustain their blood pressures and your heart rates and the, all these things that they need because they're very sick um, another thing is you have to learn teamwork when you're in critical care. Teamwork is a, until you get the job done because critical care is a lot more work. You got a lot more assessments you have to do. The expectations are higher. These patients are more sickly. So that means you're doing a lot more than you would do on a general floor. So make sure that you have a good team. Make sure you communicate. And when you're going for lunch, every time I step off a unit, I don't care if I'm going to the bathroom, getting a cup of coffee. I'm like, hey, I'm going. I tell at least three people. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I'm coming right back. And literally, I come right back. And sometimes I won't even eat off the unit. I will just eat my lunch on the unit. Depending on my acuity for the day, if they're really sick, I will sit by the unit so that way something changes or something happens and, and then I can be right by my patient. But that is your choice. So let me know if this is helping for those who are all about the critical care. Maybe you not know like what that feels like. Maybe you're like desiring something different. Maybe you want something that's going to put a fire under your butt and you work on some skills that you want to work on. You never know until you do it. Always do things scared. So if you're a little scared, that's probably going to be an area where you're going to be really good at because you're always on edge. You're always like checking everything. You're always like, oh no, your anxiety is something. So you're going to be working at your best. And you don't know what your best is until you put your, yourself out there and try different things. And then you go, I really like that. Oh, I really didn't like that. It's not for me. And that's okay if something is not for you. Everybody's not a critical care nurse. It's not for everybody. Sometimes it's good to take breaks from those types of settings because you always have the high acuity patients. You're always in that critical care mindset. You're always thinking everybody's going to crash. You're always like, oh, no, this is crazy. Like, and sometimes you get burnt out easily if you're, like, a, trying to be super ICU nurse. Because I see some people that be, like, thinking they're doctors and stuff. I'm like, know your scope of practice. Even if you're a critical care nurse, still follow the policy and procedures and standards of the hospital. Like, I had a nurse that, a patient that needed a certain meds in, the, in a regular ICU. And she's like, well, I don't wait till they verify. I just go. I'm like, well, I'm waiting. <laughs> I prac. I make sure I follow the hospital standards and protocols and procedures. Because if something happens, it is on you. It is on you because they are expecting you to follow the rules. Now, everybody in critical care, some people have that God complex. Some people have that savior complex. In the ICU, you see a lot of different personalities. Some nurses feel like they are like above. No, these are just nurses that is able to handle the pressure and that type of anxiety and that type of setting. But it's more controlled than in the emergency room. Your patient's crashing. It's a hot mess. You just see stuff all over the floor. Everybody's just doing whatever. But it's getting the job done. The ICU is more controlled. So even though your patient is crashing, it's like, all right, now we're going to give this medicine. Okay, then we're going to watch the heart rate go back down. Then we're going to watch the blood pressure go back up. And now we're going to do this. So literally your doctors are right there by your side, which I love when you're in critical care because your providers are right there a lot of the time. So if you do need a quick order change or you know your patient needs something, you can just go to the, the desk and say, hey, hey, Dr. So-and-so, can you order this for the patient? Or I notice in this with the patient, right? So that is another thing. And you also want to promote rest for these patients. These patients are exhausted. They're using all their energy to breathe. Maybe they're on a ventilator. Maybe you're on this. So you don't you want to promote a safe resting environment, a calm environment where they can relax and rest because a lot of their energy is getting spent breathing, is getting spent staying alive. So you want to make sure that you're giving them nutrition. You want to make sure they're resting because that's important so they can fight to breathe and whatever. Right. And so also you want to learn your RT. So your respiratory therapist, you need to learn who they are. You need to respect what they do because they are angels as well. They just could come in and they can knock stuff out in like seconds. And you're like, thank God. Like, and you don't want to be the one that don't work well with people. You want to learn how to work with people, even if you don't like them. And you're like, I don't like people. That's OK. You want to learn how to work with people, especially in critical care, because critical care Anything can happen to your patient and within five seconds, something can change and they can just be close to death. So if you have a good team, your team just automatically knows how to flow with you. They trust you. You trust them. You get the job done. It's when you're trying to do things on your own, 
with your own understanding is when it becomes dangerous. You don't ever want to get into that mindset of I know better. Like like I always tell pe nurses, the patients know better. The patients been in that body all their life. They know. Like a patient told me, hey, when I drop this, this usually I usually stroke out. I believe them. I usually I believe them because they are lived in their own body. I know that they know what their bodies can handle, what they can't. And listen to when your patient is talking in critical care. That is so important. Some people like critical care because their patients are intubated. They're on a vent. They can't talk. All they all these nurses do is come in and care for them, turn them, reposition them, bathe them, medicate them, feed them. Some people like the control of a critical care in a weird way, right? And some people don't like that it's so controlled, right? They don't like that because I don't know. It's not for everybody. So hopefully this video was super helpful. Now I know guys, these uh, in critical care as far as the pay, some pay is some hospitals are really really good at paying their critical care nurses, and some they uh, if it's the way it's set up, the structure of the units, like I said, you start floating a lot and all this, and you that might make you not like it because you're like I'm spending more time floating than I'm actually in in the critical care and I see you. So pay attention when these patients in these hospitals are putting out units and say, hey, we have an ICU over here. We have a step down that we need nurses. And you go over there and tell the patients, you're like, this is not an ICU. This is not a step down. I don't like when they do that. And it's, it's, it's just so annoying that they would do that. If I want to work with tele patients or general patients, then I would do it on my own terms. You already know. So be careful. Make sure you advocate for yourself. Make sure you say, no, this is definitely not what I signed up for. You hire me under false pretense or whatever the case may be. Make sure you always speak up and say something. It's nothing wrong with it, literally. So hopefully this video was super, super, super insightful. Y'all know I'm going to drop the gems and the tea and tell y'all everything. Right now, guys, I am going through so much. So y'all just pray, pray for me. I will be sharing my news in a little bit, in a little while, probably the next video. But it's just keep me in prayer. And I'll keep y'all in prayer and I'll see y'all in the next one.